Hello, everyone. Um, I'm doing a podcast today, but I'm doing a different style of podcast than I normally do. Um, it's an idea I've been brewing for a while now. I've wanted to get started now. A lot of people are going to be questioning why I'm starting it right at the beginning of 2020 when, to be honest, the season started back in September. But any of the less, welcome to the first ever edition of the YWC Football Podcast. I am your host, Main Mark Murph Griff. Call me whatever you want. Today, we are talking football, everything to do with the NFL. Maybe throw sprinkle a little bit of college in there, you know, just to add a little bit of flavor to it. But um, the YWC pod, Football Podcast, excuse me, is something I've wanted to start for quite some time now. Um, just like I said, we're going to delve into football. We're going to talk a little bit about the season. We're going to talk about wildcard weekend coming up, some coaching firings, and um, a hot button issue close to my co-host's part. I'm going to have many co-hosts throughout this. Um, if you're in the YWC if you're a friend of mine and you want to be on this podcast, please reach out to me. I am open to having anyone and everyone on this show. Why? Talk football. Talk about a sport I love and a sport I know a lot of people in this wrestling community love. But I kept saying we're. Now, I do. This is, there's been one person out there who I've been talking about this idea with for quite some time now. It's a person who's wanted to start a podcast. It's a person in the YWC I have a close relationship with, even though when I first met him, we did not get off on the right foot because of some Blue Jays, Texas Rangers issues, but now that both of those teams suck, um, we're close friends. We have a love of Greg Hamilton, a low-key love of Caleb Braxton, and everything WWE and NFL football. Um, in my league, he, in the league we were in, he beat me in the semifinals, uh, but he came in second place, unfortunately. But my co-host, Britton Harrison, and I, the lover of Chicken Express, will be talking football today, including the issue deep to his part, Jason Garrett. But anyway, guys, I just wanted to fill you in on that quick intro. I don't want to take too much of your time up just because I know if I do, you're going to get mad and it's going to be, oh, Murph's rambling again. I want to avoid that the best I can. So anyway, guys, let's get this podcast started. Next time you hear from me, I'm going to be talking to Britain. We're going to be talking about anything and everything to do with the NFL right now, but not maybe not everything, but like there's a lot of stuff I want to cover, including Wild Card Weekend, because we are two days away from the start of Wild Card Weekend. We're recording on Thursday night. I do not know when this is going to get uploaded to YouTube or other podcast outlets, as I've never done that before, all my other No Holds Barred podcasts have been uploaded exclusively to YouTube. But anyway, guys, um, just a quick two and a half minute intro, and next time you hear from me, Britain will be on the other end of a Skype call. So we'll be back in just a couple of secs. And just like that, we are back. Uh, we are back now. I have my co-host on Skype, Britain. Britain, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you. I forgot. <laughs> oh, it's all good. Live in somewhere in the deep in the heart of Texas. Uh, unfortunately. Unfortunately, yes. Um, I wanted to start this off show with off with a bang. So um, I actually was listening to another podcast today, Pro Football Talk, and they were talking about how they they're thinking the Cowboys are waiting just for any excuse to keep Garrett, Jason Garrett. And the way I'm comparing it to, it's like a bad girlfriend you just don't want to let go. Like it's like, okay, she cheated on me, but she then took me out for a nice dinner. Okay, she piece of shit shoots me like a piece of shit but then she does this it's like with jason garrett it's basically okay you won an nfc east championship but then you lose in the divisional round you lose in the wild card round so like i don't understand what they want to do but like at some point they got to cut the cord on this guy yeah uh personally i think they're waiting until his contract expires i think it uh expires officially on the 13th or the 14th and i wish they would just go ahead and cut him and just save everybody the misery because there's all this speculation that, oh, he might stay or he might get a front office job. And no matter what Jason Garrett does in the Cowboys organization, I feel like it's going to be nothing but just misery and just failure. I've seen it too much. He's been the coach for 10 years now. He's made the playoffs three times. He's gotten a first-round bye once or twice. He has, like, two playoff wins. You have the talent of, of like, a mega roster right now. How are, How is this team 8-8? Eight eight? How are they still like, the first off, number one offense in the league and miss the playoffs? How is that the number two leading uh, passer in the NFL and still misses the playoffs? It's, just, it's infuriating. And if they keep him, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to lose my mind. It, it might be the end of, uh, of an era for me as a Cowboys fan. And also, too, the way I look at it as well is you have a quarterback who's going to get paid in the next couple months who had a career year. You just pay your franchise running back, not even just like old running back, your franchise running back. You're going to probably keep Amari Cooper. You have a stellar O-line. Um, tight end is the only thing to worry about. But at the same time, too, it's like you got to cut the cord. I, saw, I heard that today as well, that it is, I think it's the 13th or the 14th. 
But, and also too, when they're saying all this stuff, oh, who's going to come in and replace him? At the same time too, I think it's the whole, hey, if you're going to go in there, you got to be a puppet. And I think that's the reason why he stayed there for 10 years. Because look, you have a puppet that you can manipulate and you know that's not going to speak his mind. The other big thing too this year is, the Cowboys beat, what, one team with a 500 plus record? Like, yeah, just the Rams. Just the Rams. But then even like when they have a chance to, Minnesota, in prime time, laid an egg. You go to Foxborough in a very good slot, that 425 slot. You only put up field goals. Sure, the weather was bad, but still. And then you go home, and I don't even know how it didn't happen after this. When you get embarrassed in your marquee game, even though I know like week 16, but getting embarrassed by the Buffalo Bills and not knock on them, Buffalo's a great team, but the fact that you couldn't even respond to what they were doing on Thanksgiving, which is like you think Thanksgiving and Dallas Cowboys, it just goes together. Yeah. And after that, too, it's all stuff. Oh, hey, we can go on a run. You couldn't beat the Bears. You, when it mattered most, week 16, laid an egg. Like, I, I don't know what it's going to take, but it's like, you, it, uh, this metaphor I don't like using, but it's like, you got to go out with a gun and just old yeller. Like, I don't know what's stopping them. And also, too, they have a guy in-house who could get another job somewhere in Chris Richard. I don't know why they just don't hire him. He's Exactly. A, yeah, he's a good coach, and also, too, he's going to keep the guys in line. Exactly. They, they have so much respect for him, and he's such a good coach. He was the defensive coordinator when uh, Seattle had the Legion of Boom. Like, this guy is no – he's no idiot. Like, he, he knows what he's doing, and I think he's ready for a head coaching job. He's, I think, interviewed with the Giants today, which would hurt if he signed with them. But, I mean, he's so good, and he's somebody who I've wanted for a long time. But I just – I don't see that ever happening, unfortunately, because I don't think, like you said, I think he's not somebody that's – going to go in and be a puppet for Jerry Jones. Yeah, and also, too, with the um, the other way I look at the uh, Chris Richard thing, too, or Jason Garrett even, back to, he may go to the, with Richard going to the Giants, with Garrett saying, oh, hey, if I get let go from here, I'm going to go to the Giants. I think that's a worse hire than Pat Shermer for the Giants, because, like, you saw the Cowboys didn't make any progress, and at the same time, too, if he goes to the Giants, like, you have, a pro- well, your, your defensive levels are going from, like, here to, like, down here, basically, like, from the top of the league, but, like, Bottom league, because we know defense is a horrible issue with the Giants right now. Yeah. And, like, he's just saying that, too, because he's probably like, oh, I'm going to go here, ha-ha. Who says the Giants are going to hire him? There's, like, a bunch of other coaches out there that the Giants are interviewing that I think they'd rather have, like, Matt Rule from Baylor, Eric Bieniemy, who I'd be shocked if he's not a head coach by the end of the year, and just a couple other guys. But, like, the way I'm looking at it, it's just, like, I understand if you want to also, too, if, he, if they want to put him on TV, but at the same time, too, it's just like, okay... I don't even think it's going to be fired. It's going to be, oh, hey, we mutually agreed to part ways or it's just his contract ran up. They don't even want to use the word fired probably just because he's in the family. Like, I don't know yeah. what's taking them so long. And the fact that he's had, like, what, three meetings now with the Joneses and they still don't have any kind of resolution? Yeah. It, it doesn't give me any faith that, like, I, I think that instead of, like, there was that rumor going around that they fired the entire coaching staff. I think everybody in the front office needs to go. I think the coaching staff... Minus Jason Garrett right now is fine. I think Kellen Moore is going to really prove himself in uh, the second year. I think that uh, Rod Marinelli really has a thumb under the defense. Like he, the defense is the best it's been since the nineties. The only weakness I would say with the defense is probably the secondary. They've had some spotty moments, but that's mainly with injuries. Yeah. But like they got a good front seven. They got a good linebacker. Even though Sean Lee's a band aid, but Leighton Van Der Esch is just still up there. Like he's one of those guys where you see in the play. But yeah, like. Even, too, if you promote Chris Rich- like get rid of Marinelli and just bring Rashard in to control the defense. Because, like you said, he was in the Legion of Boom and the Legion of Boom was in its prime. Guess what the Legion of Boom did? They won a Super Bowl. Something the Cowboys haven't done since I was two years old. I'm 26 now. That's right. Yeah. I was six months old last time they won a Super Bowl, and it hurts. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just one of those things where it's just like... And even, too, like how it's always, oh, people talk about the Cowboys and everything and how it's like, oh, you get annoyed by the Cowboys, but... At the same time, too, they're the face of the league. Like, it's one of those marquee teams where they could be, I don't know, have a season like the Bengals did. They're still going to get Sunday night football. They're still going to get Monday night football. They're still going to be on Thanksgiving. You're still going to tune in. Why? Because it's the Dallas Cowboys, and you want to see what happens. And I'm guilty of this, too, about just saying a lot of the Cowboy fans are the ones who are, like, wearing their jean shorts and the blue and white Jordans with the Weedem boys. This is our year. Like, Cowboys for life. Those are the fans that are normal. You're the most sensible Cowboy fan I've ever met. Yeah, but when I, it comes, I try to keep it real. But when it comes to this team, it's just like, okay, I understand Zeke holding out whatever. He got his money. When you're going in this year, 
guarantee you Dak's making over $30 million, not guarantee, but $30 million a season. Mari Cooper's probably going to get somewhere at least. I don't think he'll get Michael Thomas money, but he'll get somewhere close to it because he can use him as like a reasonable comparable saying, hey, like I know Michael Thomas on another level. We'll talk about that in a bit. But with Amari Cooper, he's a great product coming out of college, was a little misused in Oakland, now Vegas, but he's there. The only issue I would have with the Cowboys offensively right now is just tight end. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I would agree. Yeah, uh, Jason Witten, I, I love the guy, but there's no reason he should be starting for this team right now. No. Blake Jarwin uh, looks like really good. I mean, he's quick. He can catch the ball. I don't understand why he's not the starter right now, and I hope he is next season, whether Witten comes back or not, because th- that guy's going to be special. And even to the rumors of, oh, we want to hire Jason Witten as a head coach. It's like, no, you don't need a, pl- a player that everyone loves to be head coach. Look at what happened with Freddie Kitchens in Cleveland. Oh, you take, oh yeah, we want Freddie. I knew that was going to be a disaster from the beginning when they're all saying, oh, hey, NFC North, they have a chance to be in Miami. I'm like, this team won zero games two years ago. There's no way they're going to win that division, especially, like, I don't even see them winning the division in the next few years as long as Lamar Jackson isn't in there. Oh, yeah. It, there's, like, I think Baltimore is just going to be, Baltimore is set for the next few seasons coming up, but they got to get a guy in there, A, who, well, that's why also, too, when people were saying Ron Rivera, I'm like, Ron Rivera is not the guy who is going to work in Dallas because everyone's saying, oh, yeah, he's a phys- like, physical guy who knows defense and dealt with Cam. Jerry Jones is on another level when it comes to ego, and if you push back at him, Jerry Jones is going to let you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, that, that's why Jason Garrett's been there so long. Like, like you said, he just he, he just has to have yes men around him. He's like Vince McMahon. He just he has to think that I, I, that's another topic for another time. I, I hate that whole front office. I, I despise him. And we also know too that his son Stephen Jones is going to own the team one day once Jerry passes. Like how Triple H is going to take over for Vince. Yeah, but. Just even to, like, and speaking of the NFC, let's keep in the NFC East, because I know Ron Rivera was hired as the Washington Redskins head coach, and they brought in Jack Del Rio, another guy Dallas was looking at, but guess what? Division rival scooped him up. And now, I love the hiring of Ron Rivera. I think it's the first sensible hiring that the um, Redskins have done in a while for head coach. But at the same time, too, I'm not coming out here and saying, hey, this 3 of 13 team's going to be 10-6 and six next year, they're going to run the table. No, hey, they'll probably win, I'd say, 6-10 and 10 is their ceiling. But at the same time, too, it's a move in the right direction. You know they're going to get Chase Young in the draft, something that Giant fans absolutely hate right now. Because, like I said earlier, that team needs defense. I'm sorry, but guys like David Mayo aren't going to carry your defense, especially, too, when you cut Janoris Jenkins. I know the circumstances behind it. I don't want to get into it. It was bad. But at the same time, too, you know Giant fans are going to be salivating at that. And also, too, you have Dwayne Haskins. You've got some weapons in there. You've got Ryan Kerrigan on defense. It's a move in the right direction for the Washington Redskins, but it's ultimately, uh, let's see what happens. And also, too, like, you know how... We're talking about Jason Garrett. Ten years, nothing's happened. Look at the Redskins. It cut Bruce Allen, and now there's actually hope in D.C. that, hey, this guy's gone. Okay, now we may be moving in the right direction. Yeah, and as a Cowboys fan, like that Ron Rivera hiring, it's kind of, it, it does scare me because the guy's good. He's been through a Super Bowl. He knows what he's doing. He's a good coach. And then you bring in somebody like Jack Del Rio, and then they already have, a, like you said, a good young offense. Terry McLaurin. And Dwayne Haskins, that's going to be a deadly combination for a few years to come, I feel like. And I feel like if they play their cards right, they might end up better than Dallas and for the foreseeable future. The only thing I have with them is, I know they have Adrian Peterson right now, but he's on the verge of retirement just because of age. But if guys staying healthy is the biggest question. If he can stay healthy, yeah, that 6-10 and 10 may become a 7-9, and nine, but if he can't stay healthy, then I don't know what, like, that's the only question with me is running back. Also, because... I don't think Chris Thompson's really that much of a franchise running back. Meanwhile, Geis has that appeal when healthy. Because we've seen what he's done when he's healthy. It's just, unfortunately, he's one of those guys where he tore his ACL in his rookie year, and then this year, too, he's just plagued by, I think, knee and ankle problems. Yeah. Uh, that's... I forgot where I was going with that, but... Like it. Yeah. And I lost the, my train of thought, sorry. Uh, it's all good. Um, if we want, we can move on to a... Let's actually move on to Wild Card Weekend, just because I... And also do with coaching firings... Pat Shermer, you could see coming. I could see coming from where Britain is right now in Texas that he was getting fired. Anyone who thought, or him saying, hey, am my job safe? When you're saying that in the middle of December when your team's won three games, sorry, you're getting fired. And also, too, is the right move. I don't, also, they have to get rid of James Betcher, in my opinion. Um, Freddie Kitchens, the same thing, too, was obvious. And besides that, until Garrett happens, I don't think any other firings are coming. I think there's some coaches I can go on next year are going to be on the hot seat, like an Adam Gase, um, Matt Nagy. Um, and also, too, when I heard that the Arizona Cardinals were talking about, oh, hey, they're going to have a meeting about everything, I was like, 
Cliff Kingsbury has actually done a lot better than I thought he would. If anything, I think it's Steve Kime that needs to get fired. Arizona needs like a new management restructuring, especially now with Michael Bidwell in full control. But Arizona is honestly a team I look at at the future. They get offensive line help. They get some defensive help and maybe another weapon or two for Kyler Murray to have. That's a team to look out for. Not now, but I'd say by 21 or 22. It's a good oh, team. Yeah. Look, yeah. look at Kenyon Drake. I mean, he came out of nowhere. Miami I misused think- him. Uh, then he came back and won me a fantasy championship. I love that guy. I'm going to buy a jersey. <laughs> yeah, like even with him too, like his first game, was, like he did nothing with Miami on a short week nonetheless against one of the best defenses in the NFL. Ran wild against San Francisco. And also too, like the games, uh, week 15 against Cleveland, ran wild. Like I don't think he had a fantasy day that was, I think maybe had, since Arizona he had one day under 10 points. Yep. Yeah, he'll be, a high, he'll be a high commodity next year for fantasy. But less about the crappy teams, more about the good teams. Wild card weekend we got coming up right now. First game I'm going to talk about involves the state of Texas, which is the Bills and the Texans at 4.30, which, honestly, a lot of people say this. Call this the Houston Texan game, because if they're in the playoffs, they're playing 4.30 on Saturday. Like, it's just the truth. ESPN's there, uh, Tess and Boog calling it. Um, but with this game, I'm going to come out and say it. I think the Texans lose. I think their season peaked after beating New England. And to, um, I think Buffalo's just a better, like, like I said, they peaked. And then also to... Man, so just something about Buffalo is special this year to me. Yeah, I mean, I haven't really seen too many Buffalo games. I watched the Thanksgiving game, and I, I think I watched a, maybe if they the Bill Steelers game. I watched that one. They look okay, but the Texans, I, I feel like they're either really, really good or really, really bad. There's no in between for them, and I, it's so hard to determine like how they're going to play it. I feel like. I also think, too, it's either they're really, really good or, holy fuck, look at that injury report. It was like, Will yeah. Fuller can't... If Will Fuller's healthy, that's a deadly team, but he's questionable this week. J.J. Watt's pulling John, uh, John Cena out there, coming back, like, not even three months after tearing his pec. You don't know what he's going to be. Their offensive line's been spotty for years now. Sure, you got Laramie Tunsil, but there's some guys on there, even, too, when they beat New England, I noticed this. There's some guys out there that cannot block. Like, they need to invest money in their offensive line, even though... I'm going to go back to another crappy team. Even though they didn't make the playoffs, Mike Mayock went out there and spent money on his offensive line, and it made Oakland that much better of a team. So I'm thinking if Houston Texans can go out there, draft some good old linemen, and develop that, that's going to make them a contender. Because also, too, now they've got a good secondary. It's just health. That's the biggest thing with the Houston Texans is health. And also, too, I just think, like I said, I think they peaked after beating New England. It's like how it's, oh, they get this big victory, then they laid an egg against the Denver Broncos. Which that also just looks bad too, because then Denver has this great game, then Kansas City just rolls over them. Like that's why I, I still think the Bills are going to win, but at the same time too, it's Josh Allen's first playoff game, so you never know what's going to happen. Yeah, and I agree with what you said about the uh, the O line for Houston. I mean, I, I saw a stat that said uh, Deshaun Watson is one of the most sacked quarterbacks. Sixty sacks last year. Yeah, and I mean, it's all it comes down to just protecting your quarterback, giving him time to throw, giving him time to work. And if you don't do that, then you're not going to see any results. So, I, I don't know. I think the Bills' defense can get through that line pretty easily. I think that's going to give them problems. I, I'm going to I'm going to go with Buffalo with the upset, honestly. Same. And even, too, I just looked at the – I just wanted to look at the stats. I said 60 last year. I think it was like 60, 60, 62. 44 this year. I'm sorry, but when you're getting put on your ass by that much, and also, too – Buffalo's got some good defenders, too. I think they're going to be playing with the Blitz a lot, even though Deshaun Watson's a very mobile quarterback. You keep him in the pocket. And you like They got some good DBs like Tredavious White, Micah Hyde, Jordan Poyer. But then, too, they got like Matt Milano, Trey Edmonds, uh, Jerry Alexander, Jerry Hughes, uh, Lorenzo Alexander, excuse me. Those guys are not going to be afraid to hit him. No. They put him on his ass early. They're like, it just goes back to my point. I think Houston peaked way too early this year in December. Yeah, I think that defense is probably going to wear them out. Yeah. And, the, and to, the only thing I think that's also interesting, too, is like how I said they've got some good secondary guys. I want to see how DeAndre Hawkins plays because he's, like, he's been good, but he hasn't been great this year. Like, he's had his moments, but... Uh, yeah, it's it's so spotty. Like, him, he and Will Fuller both. Like, some days they'll have three, four touchdowns each, it feels like, and uh, the next game, the, the goose eggs. Yeah, it's like the game against, um, I remember Atlanta earlier this year where Will Fuller had an unbelievable day. He hasn't done really anything since. I mean, yeah. That week f- oh, my bench. That was that weird week five where it was like him, Michael Thomas, Aaron Jones, and I think someone else who put up like unbelievable numbers. 
But on to the next game, which is a personal to me. The New England Patriots take on the Tennessee Titans. I keep hearing everybody, too. I, was, I watch first take on YouTube just because I don't have ESPN here because obviously I'm Canadian. Sorry, I got a text. Um, the one thing I noticed with this Patriot team, and obviously it's like offense is a weak point. The only reason why I'm have, still having hope, obviously, because A, it's my team, and B, there's something different about January Brady compared to the regular season. When it's time, he turns it on. Tennessee, they haven't been in this spot. Sure, they beat Kansas City two years ago. Ryan Tannehill's only played one career playoff game, and going into Gillette Stadium, that's not something that's easy to do. There's certain venues that, just in the playoffs, that just, I think, mentally can mess with the quarterback, and Gillette's one of them. I feel like a lot of people are expecting the Titans to win, and I'm not one of them. I think the Titans heated up at the at the right time, the perfect time. But, and everybody also has the conversation every year around this time, all this time for Brady to, uh, to hang him up. He doesn't have it anymore. And it seems like every year around this time, everybody's proven wrong. And they're reminded that he's still Tom Brady. And, I mean, it's tough. I, I think this one's going to be a closer game than uh, probably the Buffalo and Houston game. But I still would say New England. I'm the same Definitely way. Just... I'm the same way. I think the spread's like only four and a half or five and a half. But I know the Bills one's a little bit higher. But with the um, New England Tennessee game, yeah, I think it's going to be less than seven point margin of victory. Like I could easily see it being hell, like a one score game, or not even one score, one point game. But like with Houston and Buffalo, I could see it being like I don't know, twenty four to 17, 24 to twenty. Yeah, I think the uh, Tennessee uh, New England game is going to be very defensive. Oh, uh, I think Derrick Henry's not going to get nearly as many yards as he has over the past few weeks. I think they're going to shut that down and. I think that's really the the one thing they have to shut down the most is the run game. That's the one thing I'm most concerned about because I even remember a few weeks ago Joe Mixon on Cincinnati was running wild against this New England Patriots team. If they can do to Derrick Henry what they did to Ezekiel Elliott back about a month or, month or two ago, then I think New England will win. But if Derrick Henry has his way and has a game, they win. I would even make the argument, too, that if Derrick Henry played Week 16 against the Saints, Titans win that game. I, I didn't see that game. I think I had to work. Yeah, I just remember being like, the Titans were up early, but then the Saints kind of let down because Ryan Tannehill had to rely on throwing. I think if Ryan Tannehill has to rely on his arm, the New England secondary is going to have its day. It's just interesting in the matchups. Like, are they going to put Stephon Gilmore, who had a bad game against Devontae Parker, on A.J. Brown alone, or are they going to put him on Corey Davis and then let, like, a Patrick Chung and a J.C. Jackson, or Patrick or like a J.C. Jackson and J, Devin McCourty, because Jason McCourty's had his groin problem for a few weeks now. Are they going to double Brown and rely to there? But also, they have uh, Tajay Sharp, I believe, and then not sure who their tight ends are right now, but it's going to be a very interesting Saturday night. Yeah. Sorry, someone came out of my house. I had something to say, but they they disrupted my, right. my train of thought. It's all good. Um, moving down south again now, uh, we're going to go to New Orleans to the Mercedes Benz Superdome Sunday. Saints Vikings. I don't think there's a Minneapolis miracle this time. I think Michael Thomas is going to have a game because Xavier Rhodes has been. I, I actually, I honestly don't care if we swear. Xavier Rhodes has been fucking horrible this year. He's not done like even in two against Washington, he's getting burned. Against Minnesota, he was getting burned. Xavier Rhodes. The only reason he's on that roster is because the amount of money he's making. I think this game. I think New Orleans is going to win by at least ten. Yeah, I'm honestly going to be surprised if New Orleans isn't in the Super Bowl this year. I feel like they, that it was their year last year. They got robbed. I think that I think they'll go pretty far in the playoffs this year. That, that's not going to stop with with Minneapolis. I, I it's tough because you never really know with Kamara the way he's been playing. But I feel like maybe they'll turn it on. They now they know that it's the playoffs. They have something to prove. They have unfinished business from last year. I, I think that it'll be. I think that one's going to be a blowout. Honestly, I could see it being. I I said at least ten points. I could see it being like I don't know, thirty five to ten, thirty five to seven. I think, and also to the other big thing with Minnesota too is their run game. Like Dalvin Cook's banged up, Stephon Diggs and Adam Thielen's been banged up. Like if they can get Kyle Rudolph going, because I know with the Saints sometimes they have struggled against tight ends when tight ends are good days. But even too with the Saints, how I say Michael Thomas is gonna have a day. They could double on Michael all they want. Ted Ginn's been good this year. Trey Quan Smith's been good this year. Jared Cook's been unbelievable. They've got something no other team has. That's Taysom Hill. Like, you throw Taysom Hill in the passing game, in a tight end situation, in a receiving situation, and the same thing too with Alvin Kamara. That New Orleans has so many things that are going to come at you that you don't know what to expect. Like, like you said, I wouldn't shock me too if the Saints are in the Super Bowl this year, but 
I only say that just because part of me, I will get into it, I'll actually get into it in a second, but yeah, like, I could see New Orleans being the Super Bowl, but at the same time, too, I just hope the whole them thinking we should be on a bye doesn't hang over their heads just because of what happened in Seattle. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of, sorry, just a second. It's all good. And guys, we'll be back in just a second to talk more about the Saints and the Vikings game. Sorry, guys, Britain had some personal family stuff to deal with there. Um, but no, back to that Saints-Vikings game, like, yeah. Something just says to, and also too, it's where it is. It's in the Superdome. I was there earlier this year because I live in a house of two Saints fans. My dad and my sister are huge Saints fans. There's something different about that stadium. Is just they're going to bring the energy. They're going to bring the passion. That's New Orleans. They're going to the crowd's going to be a huge part of that. Yeah, and for them, I think it's Super Bowl or bust for for all of them, especially after last year. Oh, yeah, especially because they they know last year very well. They sh- they. Not they should have been in Atlanta. They were going to be in Atlanta. That gets called yeah. pass interference. They get another touchdown. You know what? That's judge, jury, executioner right there. And I think the Rams' bad season is a bit of karma because of what happened. Like, the Rams really haven't recuperated since. Like, they, sure, they had some good games, but then they had some bad games. Um, anyway, on to the next game. Seattle-Philly, which is a game even to, I was a little shocked Philly got in the playoffs. But you know what? Carson Wentz has been playing well with the weapons he has. If Car- I think Tom Brady needs to have like a Carson Wentz like day, or there need to someone to step up like how Boston Scott stepped up Week 17 for the Eagles. That needs to happen. I even though Seattle's good and Seattle's got Russell Wilson, I can honestly see an upset happening here, just because it's one of those you don't know what to expect games. It's a hey Philly too. It's another hostile environment to play in. What would happen in Minnesota two years ago? Minneapolis miracle. They got smoked by 30 in that building. Now, I know it's not different, but the other thing, too, is the Legion of Boom is gone. The defense in uh, Seattle is not that good anymore, especially pass-wise. They got some good runners. The big thing I think this game is going to come down to is the Philadelphia offensive line. How can they can protect Carson Wentz and also help the running game out? Because I know they are a little banged up, but you got Brandon Brooks in there. you got Lane Johnson in there, Jason Kelsey. So I think that's what's going to happen. Carson Wentz can be Carson Wentz. Eagles will win. But if not, I think the Seahawks take it. Yeah, I, I hope that the Seahawks just beat the crap out of the Eagles. I, I hope they beat them 70-0. to zero. I, I hate the Eagles as a Cowboys fan, obviously, but even still, putting bias aside, uh, Philadelphia obviously isn't a team that should be in the playoffs. No team in the NFC should be in the playoffs this season. Uh, it's, it's a one and done for them. Uh, it, it really is. And especially against Seattle, if Russell Wilson can go out there and be the Russell Wilson he was the first half of the season MVP candidate, then Philly might as well just not even show up. Exactly. If they let Russell Wilson have a day, or even to if Seattle gets the ball first and they score, I think it's going to be hard for Philadelphia. To, I like Part of me thinks Philadelphia is just going to win just because of the whole, you know what, Seattle's mad too, probably like, hey, we were this close. We were a stupid delay game penalty from having a home game against the Vikings, which they would have easily won. And then we would have gotten fucking Philadelphia and San Francisco, which I honestly would have called it right away. San Francisco would have whooped them. But I can see this being like last year's Philadelphia wildcard game in Chicago, where it's like, it's not that it's low scoring. It, well, it is low scoring, excuse me. But there's like, no, it's just a, not because of defense, but because of just meh, like, because nothing really happens, where it's like 17 to 14 or something like that. I, I can honestly see that happening, or I can see it too being like a, like a shootout. Yeah, I, I honestly just hope they go out there and just annihilate them, and, and just just send them home packing. Yeah, I love the same thing too for the Buffalo Bills to get annihilated, but it, and also too with Buffalo, it's they haven't been tested this year. Like this is a big test for them to go into a playoff environment in Houston because we saw the leg that the leg eh, bleh, bleh, the egg they laid against the Jacksonville Jaguars two years ago in that wild card game. So we'll see. Yeah. But this is your chance to prove that you belong. Prove that you're not a fluke. Exactly. Prove that you belong because if they can go into Houston and beat the Texans, I'm going to say next year they're a wild card team. They're going to be the team nipping on the heels of New England and even, well, I was going to say Jets potentially, but I think they're still a couple years away in a, another coach firing from even considering <laughs> yeah. that. I think Adam Gase was a horrible hire to begin with. Sure, they're seven and nine, but Jets are just the Jets. But anyway, we got four teams right now who are. On buys, obviously. San Francisco, Green Bay, Baltimore, Kansas City. 
The one team in there who I don't see going to the Super Bowl, and this is going to surprise a lot of people, but it's Baltimore. The only reason why I say that, and a lot of people too right away, oh, Lamar Jackson's MVP, they have the stellar offense, he's amazing. It just comes back to last year in the playoffs, got nervous and just disappeared against the LA Chargers, who didn't even make the playoffs this year. And to, I think every Super Bowl team in the last few years, like look at New England last year, there was some doubt around them because they had the Miami Miracle, the loss to Pittsburgh, still got the bye, still got there. Philadelphia two years ago, the underdog mentality, oh, Atlanta's going to go in there and stop them. Didn't. Minnesota's going to stop them. They stopped Minnesota. Oh, New England's going to take care of business. Unfortunately, didn't happen. Philadelphia won their Super Bowl. And also, there's other teams, too, in the past that I can think of. No team is, that's won the Super Bowl recently has fa- has had a clean slate like Baltimore. Baltimore's just, oh, the last three months, won game after game after game. I think they if they faced some adversity and lost maybe like that game against San Francisco or the game against like Baltimore, they may, I'd consider them Super Bowl teams because why? Light a fire under them. Going to the playoffs this year, everyone's just going to expect Lamar Jackson to be Lamar Jackson. But I think this year, it's going to be like what happened to Mahomes last year. They're going to get punched in the mouth and not make it to the Super Bowl. Yeah, I I was the same way with Mahomes last year. Like you just said, I thought that it was his year. Uh, I thought that there was no way that they were going to miss the Super Bowl. And I've caught myself thinking the same thing about Baltimore. That I, I really... For the most part, I do think it's their year, but there's always like that big test that they're going to have to prove. And then, then the what's the word that I'm looking for? The inexperience of being in the league and being in these situations might catch up to Lamar Jackson, and especially if he goes up against uh, like a New England or if he goes up against a Kansas City in the AFC Championship. I think that I, I don't know home field advantage typically. Sometimes it doesn't mean anything, and it's going to be tough. I, I still do think it's their year, but I can see where people were worried about it. Yeah, that, that's why I worry about it, just because it's the whole, oh, hey, it's all sh- sunshine and lollipops in Baltimore. They've got a great offense. Sure, they've got they've got something that a lot of teams have, and that's that three-killer tight end combo with Hayden Hurst, Boyle, and then Mark Andrews. But it's like I said, what adversity are they facing? Even two, they're going to be tested, whether it's, they play Houston again, which I know they stomped Houston, but Houston's going to be prepared for them. Baltimore, who had a really close game with them and almost beat them. I think it was like only a touchdown game. Kansas City, who, guess what, has beaten Lamar Jackson twice. New England, who's played them before. I don't think Tennessee, the only way Tennessee will play them is in the divisional round, but I think Tennessee is the game they beat. But if they have to face anywhere along the road of Buffalo, Kansas City, Houston, or New England, which more than likely will happen... That's where I think they run into trouble. Just because, like, look at last year, too, even how I said the Chargers game. Week 16, take care of the Chargers, no problem. 15 days later, go into Baltimore. Made the Ravens just look like another team. That's where, that's where I get the whole thing, too, in the Mahomes. But you can say what you want about Baltimore quickly. Yeah, uh, like you said, I mean, the, the killer three, to, uh, the three-headed monster at tight end, Mark Ingram, they, they had... RG3 still, who, whenever he comes in, he still looks pretty decent. And sometimes that's not enough. You know, look how good Kansas City looked last year. Look how, I mean, there were one, what was it, a false start penalty? They were it was away a, from making it? Was that a false? No, it was, no, it was the, it was the uh, offside penalty. That's right. And then there was also the roughing the passer call, too. Which And even, too, that game, Kansas City had to claw back. Remember, they came out in the first half, and New England was up, I think, 13 to nothing. I think Goskowski missed a field goal. They were up 13 nothing at the half, and everyone was saying, like, what's going to happen? Like, so, even this year, too, and this is the other thing I was about to say, my AFC Super Bowl pick, if New England does not make it, is Kansas City, because I think Kansas City's proven, and also, too, Kansas City's defense is legitimate this year. It's not like last year where there's a lot of question marks. They got some guys that can play defense on that team, like Chris Jones is playing really good, Tyron Matthews really rejuvenated that defense. So I think if Lamar Jackson has to go in there and face someone like that, they're not going to be afraid of him. It's not going to be, oh, how do we prepare for him? It's going to be, let's go in there and take care of business. Yeah, I, don't know. I know they looked a little rough midway through the season, but you got to look at the injuries they had. They lost Tyreek Hill for uh, four or five, six games. They lost Mahomes for a few games. And they still ended up with a, a first-round bye. I think that says a lot about them. And I think that I, I kind of hope we see another New England 
in Kansas City AFC Championship, and I think it's going to be a different result this time. Sorry, Griff. It's all it's all good. Um, the one thing also I would notice too, it wouldn't be that it would be divisional. So if New England does win, it would be next Sunday afternoon in uh, yeah. Arrowhead. But yeah, no, too. I think it's also too the pressures of going on the road with New England. Like it wouldn't shock me if they lost in the divisional round. I know it hurts my heart to say that, but and also too, and everybody talking about oh Brady's going to be on a different team next year. I just want to say like shut up. He's he either is going to retire or he's going to go back to he's going to stay with New England for another year. I think he yeah. wants to beat Michael Jordan's got six. He gets one more. He gets seven. I think once he gets seven, he calls it a career. That's just an, that's another topic for another day. But with Kansas City, too, even though you said, yeah, they faced that midseason adversity when no one thought they were the same anymore when Mahomes got hurt, when Tyreek Hill was out. But they had, they did well against her. Sure, they lost to Green Bay. They took care of Minnesota, no problem. But then they came back in December. When it came down to beating teams they should have beaten, beat the Raiders, who were, at the time, lurking at that division. Went into New England and took care of them. Stomped on Denver. Went to Chicago. Only a field goal allowed. L.A. was, oh, it's a meaningless week. We win. New England loses, which happened. I'm not even talking about that because I'm just going to get angry. Like, Matt Lorenzo level angry. But they take care of business. And also, too, that's why I bring in the adversity factor. That Look, people doubted them at the end of the year. And also, too, there's one player we haven't mentioned. They're all pro tight end. Travis Kelsey, who besides George Kittle is the best tight end in the league. I think it's the, it's 1A and 1B. There's no, like, 1 and 2 with them. Those two guys have just been absolutely unbelievable this year, both in fantasy and on the field. That's why, because that you mix that defense with that offense, they're good. It's just the only concern with me with Kansas City is coaching, because Andy Reid's clock management is just awful. Yeah, I said last year if they had the offense that they had this last or last season and the defense they had what two three seasons ago, they would have gone six, sixteen and zero. They would have won a Super Bowl. Yeah, easily. There, there's no question about it. Uh, I think that in terms of Kansas City and Baltimore. Uh, I think that's going to be your next, like, Indianapolis versus New England. Your new Lamar Jackson versus Patrick Mahomes is your new Brady versus Manning. Uh, that's going to be so much fun for so many years, and I, I, I can't wait for that. I also don't know how – the first two times they played were 1 o'clock games. I, if that is not on NBC next year, I'm going to, like – I'd be tempted just to write the league office, like write Goodell being like, yo, why is this game not in Sunday night primetime or even the 425 slot? Like, sure, there may be other games you want to put in there, there's just certain games that belong on Sunday Night Football or 425. Because even though 425 yeah. is 425, it's still a special spot, no matter if it's CBS, if it's Fox. It's the game most people tune into because the 1 o'clock games, it gets lost in the shuffle a lot of the times. It would be like, or even to, um, if like the Cowboys, if they had a couple of the games where it was like 1 o'clock and like they had the blunder, I think it would be less noticed as it is as if they're 425. Because besides the Patriots, them and the Cowboys get a lot of games at like Pat not in 1 o'clock. I think New England only had... Two home games at one o'clock the entire season. Yeah, uh, like you said, like the, uh, those games, some of those should be. It blows my mind that New England versus Dallas wasn't this year. But every time they play, they never play prime time. I Dallas think it's New England. I think it's Fox. Like there's certain games where, like even to with New England and Kansas City this year, I think it's games where CBS steps in and be like, "We want this game." Because yeah. like NBC sometimes too, it's just like a mismatch of, "Hey, here you go." But then also too, there's the Monday night football games, which are just like. I don't even know why I'm watching this. Or it's Thursday night too. Um, and now, if we can focus on the end. so yeah, that's my that's my thing. If New England doesn't go to the Super Bowl, I think it's going to be the Kansas City Chiefs in the AFC. On to the NFC now. I have the same take about the San Francisco 49ers that I do with the Seattle, not Seattle, um, with Baltimore. It's not the adversity thing. It's just he's good, but I think Garoppolo is going to be like Lamar Jackson in the playoffs. Maybe not in the divisional round. They may win the divisional round depending on who they get especially if they get the Philadelphia Eagles. But you get Seattle again, Seattle's not going to be scared to go into uh, Levi Stadium. They did it once already this year, so what's stopping them from doing it again? San Francisco's got that killer defense, which Robert Sala should be a head coach. It's not, oh, he maybe he should be a head coach either next year or the year after. Like, he's like he's been there for three years, too, and also to all the credit in the world to John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan. I just think that whole experience thing with the quarterbacking in the playoffs is going to catch up to Jimmy Garoppolo. Yeah. Uh, before I get into my take on that, I'm going to run into my house because my phone is about to die. All right. So Sounds good, guys. And we're going to be back in just a second. Sorry about that. I, I was at like 2%. It's all good. We're back now. Like You just heard Britain's phone was at 2%, so he had to run inside, get to that charger, so we did not have to end the podcast. Uh, ooh, I lost his picture for a second. 
But anyway, like I said with the San Francisco 49ers, I think what happened to Lamar Jackson last year is going to happen this year. Just because, like I said, organizations are great. But quarterback play is ultimately what is what's going to win you a Super Bowl, unless you're the Denver Broncos of four years ago. But my, myself included, we like to forget about that. Yeah. Um, Jimmy Garoppolo, like you said, is another Lamar Jackson thing. you got to really see how he's going to be in this situation because he's never really been in this situation before. Uh, I mean, he's won a couple Super Bowls, but he's never been the starter, the guy for a premier team like this. And it, I think it's make it or break it for him. Uh, he's either going to go out there and play really well or he's going to go out there and stink up the joint. And personally, I mean, I hope he goes out there and does good with whoever he faces next week. But you never know. The the, the inexperience, like I said, of being in that situation, it might cause some trouble. But I think he has a good enough team around him to bail him out of that if something were to happen and they were to sink. Hey, that's what happened in the game against the Saints, man. It was... It, it weren't for that, like I said, too, how George Kittle, besides Travis Kelsey, the best tight end in the league. If it were not for that one play, I don't think San Francisco wins that game. Yeah, and then it goes back, too, to that uh, missed two-point conversion. Uh, yeah, just so, some questionable play calling by the Saints. It, it's, I hope, honestly, I hope that's a rematch for the NFC champion. Uh, could it be? Yes, because they're the one. Because if New Orleans wins, they go to Green Bay. That's another team I want to look at because I think more than New Orleans, I think Green Bay is under a lot of pressure just because of the fact, and I've heard this too, like I said, I watch a lot of ESPN clips on YouTube. When it comes down to talking about who's the greatest of all time, Aaron Rodgers, sure, he's in the conversation, but when Lombardi's going to get brought up, it's going to go, oh, hey, Brady's got six, Aaron's got one. I think there's a lot of pressure for Aaron to win just because, hey, he's got a good def- he's got a really good defense this year. Aaron Jones is a stud, and you two got Devontae Adams, who had a really good year. Excuse me. But with like Green Bay, like I said, too, you got New Orleans coming in there. I think New Orleans could easily go into Lambeau and take care of business. It's just the weather's going to play a factor into that. But part Because, like, too, even look at what happened. If we get Green Bay-San Francisco in the championship game again, San Francisco, Green Bay, the two games have gone out to California, San Francisco, and L.A., stunk up the joint. So I think, too, and also here's the thing. If New Orleans goes to San Francisco, I think there's a very good chance that the Saints leave Levi Stadium on a plane to Miami. Yeah. Uh, I would agree. I think the Saints, when they go into playoff mode this year, I think they're going to be really tough to beat, honestly. Even somebody like Aaron Rodgers. I, I think the, the Saints team is something pretty special. Because even if Drew Brees goes out, you still have Teddy Bridgewater. They went 5-0 and with him as a starter. If you can do that without Drew Brees being your quarterback while he's up, like that, that alone should rest any any concerns that the Saints fans might have. I mean, they're in good hands. I, I I don't see them going home, honestly. Yeah, like even too, they go back to where they won their first Super Bowl ten years ago. They go back to Miami. Drew says, "I'm gonna hang it up. I'm done. He's 40. You can easily give that money because too. Here's the other thing with the Saints: Alvin Kamara is getting." Paid. And I say that with a capital P at the end of this year. Sure, he didn't have the best year, but you know what? He's a top five running back in this league. And also, too, there's Christian McCaffrey, but that's like I said, another story for another day. With and the two main guys I think are going to get paid this year is, well, besides the Dallas Cowboy thing, we already talked about that. Alvin Kamara is going to get shown the money, and Patrick Mahomes is basically, I think, is going to get a blank piece of paper and write at least 35 on that piece of paper. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that'd be the biggest mistake the Hunt's made. Like, you're literally going to give in to him. I don't even know why this week off the bye week, he's not talking about, yeah, get me a new contract. So, But then I also think, too, if they did that, it would be a lot of pressure on him because it's like, look, he's getting this money next year. Like, he's getting this money because I know after your third year, you're eligible. I don't think they're going to pick up the option on him. I don't think he's going to be franchised. No, Patrick Mahomes is going to get... He's probably going to get a fully guaranteed contract. And honestly, it's not like Kirk Cousins where you go... Um, uh, Rick Spiel- yeah, it's Rick Spielman. What the fuck are you doing? You're going to get that and go, yeah, he deserves it. No, I, if you question if Patrick Mahomes deserves the money, you're an idiot. Yeah, and I think it's better for him to have to go in there and prove that he deserves it. I mean, we already know he deserves it. Yeah. For him to go in and get deep into the playoffs again, like you said, I think it would be a distraction if he just got paid and then, you know, he's like, okay, I got my money. What else am I playing for? Yeah. I only say but, that too because but, I know that he could have signed his deal. 
after, as soon as the season was over. Uh, not this, like the season season, but the regular season. So once week 17 ended, he could get that. That's only the reason why I mentioned that. Mm. Yeah, that's just like what I said. That's the only reason why I mentioned that. It's just because he could get paid now. But I think there's pros and cons to that. So it's like, look, I got paid too. But even say he gets paid in divisional round, you play, let's just say, Houston, Houston, Buffalo, or New England, and you go out there and you don't win, it's going to leave Kansas City fans in a really salty place of, uh, okay, what the fuck just happened? But at the same time, too, it's he got paid. Now what? Yeah. Some Somebody else that is going to get paid too. Teddy Bridgewater, he only signed a one-year deal with New Orleans. He did a bet-on-yourself contract, and you know what? It's working for him. I don't think they... I think they can maybe convince him to stay, but the fact, too, that he went in to Seattle, beat the Seahawks, took care of the Cowboys when they were 3-0, and and then he had games, too, against, I believe, Chicago, ten, not, uh, not Tennessee, Jacksonville. Yeah, like, 5-0. and The only game he lost was because he was thrown into the Rams game when the Rams were still legitimate... And two, when Breeze got hurt, so it was kind of, okay, you're thrown into the fire. When he had a week to prepare for Seattle, I don't think anybody saw him winning that game. I thought even two would be, oh, hey, if the Saints are 500 come the end of October, right around their bye week, they're good. No. They're 13-3 and three for a damn reason. They have great coaching. They had Teddy Bridgewater carry them. So I think next year, too, an- another team can go out there and scoop them up because we obviously know there's going to be teams looking for quarterbacks. But at the same time, too, if you stay in New Orleans for another year, and even if Drew stays, mentor under Drew, and I was also thinking this, too, if I'm Sean, why wouldn't I want to get him involved in some way in the playoffs? Throw everything you can at the Minnesota Vikings. Or even if you beat that game, when you're in Lambeau, throw everything at the Green Bay Packers. Because, A, you got to prepare for Taysom Hill, which is really hard to do. And if you get Teddy Bridgewater in that mix, that's just like adding gasoline to a fire. Yeah. I forgot that's going to be like a like pretty much a homecoming game, even though it's not at home for Teddy Bridgewater. That's got to be bittersweet. Just for him to beat, even though he was, I'm pretty sure he was still on the sidelines for the Minneapolis Miracle. But even too, like I said, with Minnesota, I think they'll figure it out. Um, I think they'll, they'll figure out the quarterback situation later on. One other thing I wanted to mention to you, I don't think there's ever been more of a slam dunk Madden 21 candidate than Lamar Jackson's going to be. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nobody else. No one. Like I, I, mean, I can't even think of anybody else who would even... No, not at all. Like, it's honestly one of those things like you look at Lamar Jackson and you're just like, oh, yeah, next year, like I, I can walk down the hallway from where I am right now to my bedroom, and that's where I, I have my PS4 in there, and I see Patrick Mahomes on there. Next year, I know I'm going to have Lamar Jackson on that PS4 case. Just There's no questioning about it. And it's going to look so nice with that purple and everything. That's going to be a badass cover. Yeah, it will be. Uh, anyway, let's. Uh, I want to switch gears for a second because I know you're a big SEC guy, especially Razorback, uh, but a rival of yours... And a t- uh, there's two Tigers battling in the Superdome in 11 days. Yeah. Honestly, with the other two games, I wanted I wanted Clemson to win just because I've never had an infatuation for Ohio State, and I'm not a big call. I, I'm not. The, I like watching college football. But like I don't have a team that I'm like connected to. Like you're connected to Arkansas. Alex is connected to LSU. Uh, and like I know there's other people out there who are connected to teams, but I just watch it for the just for the, for the fun of it and just for the love of it. Like I watched. Oregon, Wisconsin yesterday, which is a stellar game. But when it comes down to this national championship, I think it's a coin toss for who's going to win. But ultimately, I'm I'm picking LSU. Yeah, I'm picking LSU too. And it's tough being a Razorback fan because we're in the SEC West with both LSU and Alabama. So probably not going to see too many bowl games for the foreseeable future. Um. I think LSU is really special this year. Uh, I sound like everybody else who talks about LSU, but Joe Burrow is insane. Uh, The team that he has surrounding him is insane. He has a great coach. He's under great leadership. Uh, Clemson, I haven't watched too much of, honestly. I know Trevor Lawrence is is supposed to be amazing, but something about Joe Burrow. uh, That guy is obviously a future Bengal, Heisman winner. Future, future college football, whatever they call it, championship. Yeah, I don't know what they call it. The other thing too is, there's just something about like with college football, like with football, there is so many announcers I've got gripes with just because of the way they call games or whatever, or like how there's certain play-by-play guys who are better at certain sports. ESPN has a real knack for getting talent because like I know a lot of people are against the whole Tess and Booger thing. Like last year was horrible with Witten in the box and Booger on that Booger mobile. But something about Joe Tessitore calling a football game—it's just he's got that voice. 
I, I see the same thing with Chris Fowler, too. So, like, it's just, it's two Tigers. It's in New Orleans. I don't know how you better write a better storybook for the LSU Tigers. And winning in Louisiana with probably the most Cajun Louisiana coach in the history of pro football. I'm, I'm saying pro football because, like, I don't care. Like, Ed Ogeron, college, NFL. I, there's just, and also, to the fact that it took Trevor Lawrence getting his head knocked in, which that was a very controversial moment where he got where the player, I forget his name, I think his last name is Wade, for Ohio State getting ejected. It took that to get them going, because before that, Ohio State was just running rough shot over Clemson. Meanwhile, with LSU, from the second they got the ball, they just did not let Oklahoma have anything. Yeah, I, I wish I could have seen those games. I was at work, unfortunately. But I saw Burrow through like seven touchdowns in that first half. Uh, I know the Clemson game was a little bit closer. I saw a little bit of that. I think it's going to be a fun game. I'm definitely going to make sure to watch the championship because outside of the Razorbacks, I don't watch too much college football or outside of like those SEC teams like LSU, Alabama. But I don't know. Part of me doesn't want LSU to win, but part of me like really likes Joe Burrow and really wants to see him succeed. So I think he's going to have like such a good year, such a good year. Cause I mean, you got to think of it like 11 and 0 Heisman championship. Number one overall pick. This and it couldn't happen to a better dude. He, he's so humble, he's so down to earth, and I love when good things like that happen to good people. And even the fact, like how, like what was I gonna say? Like this year going into the draft, it was all Tua, Tua, Tua. Then Burrow just came in and said, like, also to injury played a part of that. But I'll, I want I'll want to ask you about Tua in a second. But just the fact too that this kid comes out of nowhere. Yeah, he's from like probably being a fourth or sixth round pick. He's now probably gonna be the number one overall pick because we obviously know going to next year. Unless Tua goes back to school, Trevor Lawrence probably 100% guaranteed is going to be the number one overall pick. It's probably really... Fields may have a little bit of a say in that, but I think Fields probably will go top five next year. Fields is Ohio State? Yeah, Ohio State. I think he's a sophomore, so yeah, next year he'll probably come out. But it's just this year, It's we know Chase Young's going to, like I said earlier, he's going to go to the Redskins. Joe Burrow, I think, is a lock to go to the Bengals, like, unless they, the Bengals do something really bad. Even though they have a bad defense, like, you need a quarterback. So, obviously, you know, Andy Dalton's not getting it done. Joe Burrow working with Zach Taylor. We'll see where it goes with them, but... Oh, it's just so many... It's just, like, how I said, too. It's just storybook. It's perfect. Yeah. I, that's the reason why I want... And also, dude, it's because it's in New Orleans. If this was anywhere else, it'd be, like, if it was in, let's say, Miami, Los Angeles, Las Vegas, Santa Clara, because I know it was out there last year, Houston... It would be the same, but it wouldn't be the same, but it'd be, still be cool. It's just the fact that it's in New Orleans. You know that stadium's gonna be purple and gold. You know Bourbon Street's gonna be purple and gold. Go Tigers! And then too, you're gonna have Clemson fans obviously in New Orleans, but man, it's just it's, it's gonna be a different kind of energy. It's a different. Yeah, it's gonna be. It's gonna. I think it'll be comparable to a Saints home game, and also to I because I know too playing in Louisiana and playing too in Clemson, they call it Death Valley. I think LSU's going to have a real home field advantage because you don't see this too often where a team from the same state's playing in the college football playoff and they say, sure, Georgia happened, but there's a big difference between the Georgia team two years ago and the LSU team this year. Yeah, like I said, I, I can't really comment too much on that because I, I, I need to get more into college football, but I, I, I'm hoping that this game, this national championship game, will like really, really hook me, really get me invested. Yeah. I'm sure it will. Yeah, this is a bit of college football I wanted to talk about, but um, what else was I going to say? Um, besides that, I don't think there's a whole lot left for us to talk about. Like we have our winners. Like so to recap, I've got the bit. So let's just recap our wild card winners quickly. We both agree upon the Saints winning. Think? Did you pick the? We both picked the Patriots. Mm-hmm. Bills and Texans. Who did you have? Uh, the Bills. Both have the Bills, but then we're. You know what? I'm going to be indifferent. He's going to go Seahawks. I'm going to go Eagles. I know it probably is biting at him a little bit because he's going, what are you doing? I just want to do it just for the lulls and also, too, because I know that oh, if the Eagles win, I know Giants fans and and also it's an Eli Manning. Like I said, we could talk about the season all we want to, but like I don't really feel like talking about the Giants right now because I fucking hate the Giants. I just want to see, like, no offense, but I want to see you guys just like, awesome. it'd be like it's like one of those things where you look at this team and you go, what the hell? Like, Look at Seattle years ago with Marshawn Lynch. I don't. I'm not saying anything like that's gonna happen, but I'm saying if it did, I'd just be like, I'd be watching it. They're like, I don't know whether to laugh or go, like scratch my head, go, like, what's going on? I mean, I'm I'm hoping it's not like that. 
But stranger things, I guess, have happened in the world of the NFL. We, you never really know what's going to happen. And those are where my three favorite words come in any given Sunday. Any given Sunday. Yeah. Um, and also, too, it's going to be Carson Wentz's first postseason game, so we want to see how that goes. But one other thing, because I think we'll wrap it up soon, but one thing I wanted to mention before, like, in this, I think with that 2016 draft, you put Carson Wentz on the Los Angeles Rams and Jared Goff on the Eagles, the Eagles are not a playoff team this year. They're like a four or five win team max. And you put Carson Wentz on the Rams, Rams are le- like more Super Bowl contenders than they were last year. Yeah, I mean, Carson Wentz, I'm not the, I'm not just because I hate the Eagles so much. Like I, I don't get the hype with the guy. I think, on, in all honesty, I think Dak is better, and I'm not just saying that because I'm a Cowboys fan. Oh no, I, I, I put Dak, I put Dak upon, I put Dak not upon, I put Dak above uh, Wentz as well. I'm just saying, like with Wentz and Goff, if you flip the two, I think this is a very with this Eagles team in particular. Like, yeah. I think the Cowboys would have made the playoffs a lot easier, even at nine and seven or eight and eight. Yeah, because Goff, I just feel like. Uh, there's no reason he should have even been in the Super Bowl last year. He was a rec- Nickel Roby Coleman, a horrible missed call, which has led to so much BS. And also, to the Saints get screwed every week. I really hope they don't have any bad penalties this Sunday because, look, it's a team that deserves everything. That's a gr- like they they love their team. They love their football. I think it's ca- I, I don't know who the ref is calling this Sunday. I want to say Carl Cheffers for some reason. I pay a lot of attention to the refereeing especially after what Jerome Boger did against New England a few weeks ago in Kansas City. Um, I, I said some words that I'm not going to say on. Nothing nothing offensive, but I said a lot of a lot of profanity. Um, because refing honestly, can make or break the game. Like Also, the other thing I noticed, too, Bill Vinovich was the ref in last year's NFC Championship game, has not done a single Saints game. He enters New Orleans, he'll, he'll, he'll die. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They want this man set on a stick. You know what I would love to see happen? Like, say if Seattle goes into San Francisco and takes care of them, and then New Orleans beats Minnesota and Green Bay, New Orleans-Seattle NFC Championship game. This is just a hypothetical. I doubt this is going to happen, though. Where Roger Goodell, or even at the end of the next season, or if they go to the Super Bowl and win it, I was going to say because it's in New Orleans. Imagine Roger Goodell going into New Orleans, presenting them with the NFC Championship trophy a year later, or even to... The suit with that Lombardi handing it off to Sean Payton or uh, Gail Benson, excuse me. There's just something about that. I know Saints fans are just going to salivate. Mm-hmm, they're going to savor that. I would too. Yeah. It, it's just been so much BS against them. Yeah. Also, do, yeah. as soon as you get off the highway right outside of the Mercedes Benz Superdome, there is a big sign that says Fire Goodell. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's a lot of fan bases that hate that man. Oh, yeah. I think just about every fan base, and it's fair. It's yeah. warranted. Everybody's got his gripes with them. Um, but anyway, guys, uh, we covered all the bases for this week. I don't think there's a whole lot left to cover. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in to Episode 1 of the YWC Football Talk Podcast. Britt and I will be back next week with, I was going to say, more news. Let's, hopefully we get some closure with Jason Garrett within the next week or two. Uh, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll talk a little bit more about the national championship because then it'll be right around the corner. Maybe we'll get a couple other people in here talk about that see what's up talk to visual around because we're going to know everything that's happened on and then we'll recap wild card weekend which may be a good thing for me or maybe a bad thing for me because i got the patriots in it so we'll see what happens saturday night thank you guys for listening britain it was great having you well i was gonna say having you on you're gonna be here regularly i'm gonna branch on some other folks but if you're in the ywc and you want to be on this podcast shoot me a link more than likely i'll only bring you on if i know, if i know you personally and also to if i know you know you know you know your football stuff if you're going to come on here and just shoot blanks or troll no not for me this is i want to make this podcast legitimate i have a legitimate mic now two guys from youtube sure all of us fell in love with wrestling but you know what we all love too the national football league that's right it's, it's crazy wrestling brings us all together but we all share so many more interests in like, so many other things we branched out in it's really cool honestly yeah all right well guys thank you very much for listening Britain. thank you very much for being on there and we'll see you guys after wild card weekend goodbye and thank you for listening to episode one of what's to be many more